program. I'm Lana Kay, and I can't help but be excited about today's program. For all of our single viewers out there who have been searching for Mr. Wright, Ms. Wright, today's the day, today's your lucky day. Also, to our married couples who are looking to get that relationship back on track, this show's also for you. So please welcome our guest, Joshua Barfels to the program. Welcome, Joshua. Hey, thanks, Lana. It's great to be here. Joshua is a relationship coach, he's a speaker, and he's also an intimacy expert. So I think if anybody's got the answers we need, it's going to be Joshua. And I'm so glad you could come out today, Joshua. Now, uh, I found Joshua in a great article that he wrote for Whole Living Journal. And if you're not familiar with that publication, it's a great one. It's free. It's usually at your library. It's at our health food store. It's, it's at a lot of locations around, so look for it. But in this article, the most alluring part, Joshua, was um, you being a relationship expert. Now, I have heard about coaching, you know, mm -hmm. job-wise, success-wise. So how did you become interested in helping people with their relationships? Well, and it's really an interesting story because a long time ago, back when I first met my spouse, um, I had a situation where I was really interested in her, but it turns out that she was not interested in me. Um, she had a list of all of the qualities and characteristics that she wanted to see in the guy that she wanted to be with, and according to her, I met none of those characteristics, none of those requirements. And so I really realized that I had to do some work, and I started to develop myself, become more attractive for myself, and, and start to apply that to this relationship that I found myself in. And we really had to start to grow and become more full as people, as individuals, and really grow our relationship so that we could have the kind of love life that we really wanted to have. So and then did you convince her that I am the one <laughs> after you worked on yourself? Well, it's funny because over time, I eventually grew into the person that she wanted to be with, not by changing who I am to be somebody else, but by becoming more of who I really am, who? by stepping into more of my authenticity, more of just my natural traits, my gifts, my talents, things like that. And so we kind of came closer together because of it. And what happened is, over time, people started coming to us asking for those secrets, asking for those tips. What is it that makes your guys' relationship so fantastic? And we started working with couples, and we started working with single people to really help them to create the kind of love life that they want. And eventually, it became my passion and, and the thing that I really wanted to focus on the most. So that's a great story, great, great, great story. Okay, attraction in your article, Joshua, the cornerstone of solid relationships. Okay, so tell us what, so attraction has to be there? Absolutely. Attraction, everybody thinks that love and respect are the most important elements of a healthy relationship, and they really are important. But I often say that love and respect are the foundation. And if you wanted to build a house, which is your relationship, a really healthy, vibrant house that's going to be strong and stable, you have to have more than just love and respect. And attraction is a key part to that equation. Mm -hmm. Because attraction is the thing that helps draw you together as a couple. It's the thing that helps motivate you whenever things start to get tough. And it's the piece that's going to keep your love life alive and thriving even through after years and years of being together. Mm -hmm. So you write in here that you're asking us to not just uh, go get plastic surgery, but, uh, but to uh, pursue it physically, emotionally, spiritually, pursue all of that. Yes, attraction is really has more to do with just our physical appearance. It's really more about how you choose to show up in your day-to-day -day life. How happy are you with your life? How passionate are you? Are you really in touch with your joy? People who are in touch with their joy and in love with their life are naturally attractive. And then people want to be around you more. Your spouse will want to be around you more. And so it helps to keep that passion and that intimacy alive even over the long term. A lot of times when people are struggling to create intimacy and connection, whether they're single or when they're in a long-term relationship, it's because there's a part of them that isn't 
being fulfilled. There's a part of them that they're not out there in the world expressing their, their true selves, if you will. They're not out there really demonstrating who they are inside. Mm-hmm. And that's not showing up in a big way. And when you start to show up in that big way, when you start to pursue your passion and follow your joy and follow your bliss, you become more naturally attractive. Okay, now give us some, people say, so you're saying work on yourself. Yes. Don't be out there pursuing, don't be out there figuring out, you know, what bar can I go to, what singles club can I go to. You're saying focus, bring the focus here, that way you're going to have this positive energy Think about it. circling around you that is pulling, yeah. pulling so, so think about it this way. You. So think about it this way. Okay. Every person is broadcasting unconsciously a certain kind of vibe. And we talk about that all the time. Oh, that person has a bad vibe, or I really like the energy that that person is putting out. And so if you're not aware of the kind of energy that you're putting out there in the world, you're going to get some pretty mixed results. And this continues to be true even once you're in a relationship. But the more conscious you become, the more aware you become about the way that you show up in the world and that kind of energy that you're putting out in the world, then you can start to make changes in the kind of energy that you're putting out, which is what everybody else around you responds to. I mean, have you ever it's walked true. into a room? That's true. Have you ever seen somebody walk into a room, and the moment they walk into that room, they can completely command the entire room? Everybody in there notices that that person walked in, even if they aren't physically seeing them. And it's because of their presence. It's because of the kind of energy that they're putting out. And when you start to become aware of your energy and start to change it to be much more in alignment with who you really are, then you start to get different results. Mm -hmm. I, I so agree with that. Now, Joshua has created a wonderful website, and we'll put that up at the end of the show. But his, you write in your website, Joshua, in just 45 minutes, I can tell you exactly what's holding you back mm-hmm. and from having the intimacy you desire and how to change it. So how would a session go, Joshua? Say I call the number at the end of our show. How how are you going to ev- how do you start that evaluation process of this is where Lana is going wrong? Sure. So the first thing that I do, and one of the things that differentiates me as a coach from say a counselor or a therapist, is I'm all about taking action and helping clients take new action because that's the only thing that's going to get you a different result is starting to take new action. So when we start to talk about where you are and what's going on in your life and the experiences that you're having, we're going to start picking out little patterns in the behaviors and the thoughts and the beliefs that you have and just shed some light on them so that you can see the ways in which your actions and your thoughts and your beliefs might not be serving the actual outcome that you're moving towards. And so my job is then to help you get really clear about what is a strategy and what is some new action that you can start to take right now to start to get different results. Results. I don't need to go back into your childhood and tell me about your past. Let's focus on what's going on right now so that you can understand what you need to do to get different results. Okay, Joshua, this was so interesting to me. Again, from his website, you do want to go there. Uh, Whenever couples fight or argue, it is usually because one or both of them have a need that's not being met or a a core value that is not being honored. Yes. Talk to us about those. I'm very glad that you brought that up because I do a lot of work with um, couples who are struggling with affairs and infidelity. And the main reason why affairs happen, 93% of all affairs, are caused by a relationship need that is not being met. A lot of times that need is completely unconscious. It's something that you're not even aware of in in terms of I can't identify it, but you feel that there's something missing. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we start to gain awareness around what those needs are so that you can start to have them fulfilled within your own relationship and you don't have to step outside of it mm-hmm. to, to find fulfillment. When we find that out, are we supposed to tell our, our significant other then this is what's missing? I recommend it, but I recommend it in a very specific way. If there's a need that isn't being met, a lot of times there's some other layer where you don't feel comfortable approaching your spouse and talking about it. And so we'll explore different ways to have those conversations that are safe 
and that are effective so that you aren't just dumping something on your spouse like and saying, you better, you better start doing this right. so I'm going to have to I'm do this or else right. I've got to play, okay. Because that's going to backfire and that's not going to get you the kind of connection that you really want to have with your significant other. Okay, honoring commitment means establishing boundaries, you say. Yes. And so do we, if we're mature enough, do we talk about those at the onset like, you know, um, well, I know my husband told me. He says, hey, I trust you. Uh, I'll give you, you know, uh, you can do anything you want to do. But if I ever find out that you did anything wrong, um, it'll be over. And, and I know he meant it. Yes. I mean, that was a boundary for him. Mm -hmm. He'd had a, a previous marriage. He, he had some things go wrong in that, and that's what he told me. And I know he meant it. I mean, I could get down and, and plead and beg, but I know that was a boundary. Yes. And I remembered when he first spoke to me about that. So that doesn't have to be that drastic, maybe, but there are things that we should say, this will be a breaking point. Yes, absolutely. Commitment in any relationship is only as good as the boundaries that encompass it. You have to have a line in the sand with your commitment, otherwise commitment can easily become slavery which is something that none of us want, where we feel trapped in a relationship that's not serving us, that's not fulfilling us, that's not helping us to be the, the healthy, happy people that we all want to be. And so as you become aware of what your boundaries are, it's very important to talk about those with your significant other, either at the onset of the relationship or maybe you have an experience with your significant other, something that just doesn't sit right with you. And at that point, it can be really important to have another conversation and say, you know, I just realized that this is really important to me. This is something that matters a lot. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about how we're going to incorporate this new feeling, this new experience into our relationship so that we can move forward without having problems down the road. This is a fact from you, Joshua. What happens in your most intimate relationships will affect every other part of your life, your career, your family, your friendships, and your success. Yes, our most intimate relationships are at the core of who we are as people. What happens in those relationships really does ripple out and affect every other part of life. Think about the times in your life when your relationship is really going well. Maybe it was at the start of a new relationship and everything is rosy and great and all of a sudden everything else in life seems easy. It seems happy. The sun is shining just a little bit brighter. We're walking on air. <laughs> I remember. Walking on air. It's I remember ride. those days. But, this, but the opposite is also true. When your relationship is not going well, when it's stagnant, when it feels like you're in a rut, mm -hmm. then that negatively impacts everything else in your life. And in fact, there's been a lot of research done over the past 20 years or so showing, demonstrating that people who have healthy, intimate relationships are much more productive in their careers, they're much more successful in their finances, they're much more successful in their friendships and, and creating the kind of relationships that they want outside of their intimate relationship as well. There was a book, and, and you may not be familiar with it, I read it a long time ago, Napoleon Hill uh, wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich. And in that, one of the categories was um, their sexual energy and um, everything was contained in one woman with these successful men. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't scatter that energy. They were their, their um, uh, go-to person, their intimate person. They could share business secrets. One powerful woman, uh, they thought, added to their success or maybe created it. Absolutely. So I, I believe what you're saying there, that and the it's same so is very important. And the same is true in reverse for one powerful man can be all the difference for a woman. It goes both ways. Yes, I agree. There, I agree there are a lot that. of times when you can come home from your busy, stressful day at work and just having somebody there who can really hold space with you, who can really just understand be there and, and understand. Yes, who gets you and who can help you with whatever challenges that you're going through can make a world of difference. Everything, yes. Now, Joshua, you host two discussion groups one for singles, mm -hmm. one for couples. Okay, so. Let me ask you, so becoming irresistible attractive is for a, a topic that you address in one of your single. Yes. So tell me, how can I become, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but how, how, can, how do you become irresistible? Is that, again, focusing on ourself, building ourself? 
to become this attractive person that, that is that full of self-esteem and yes. good vibes. And well, well, think about the type of people that you are already attracted to and what are some of the qualities and characteristics that they have that draw you to them. Maybe it's, maybe it's their confidence. Maybe it's their self-esteem. Maybe it's their presence, which is huge. And those are the qualities and characteristics that are going to stay with you no matter how old you are, no matter what your skin looks like, no matter what your hair looks, looks like, like. It does not matter. I, I understand. So do address that a little bit. So, you know, uh, some people say, well, you know, she didn't look like this when I married her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just sort of taking him for granted, you know. Sometimes we talk to the people at home, worse, our spouse, worse than we would anybody in the whole wide world. We're taking them Very for true. granted. Uh, we're no longer fixing up. Do well, you, do let you me hear, the, in, do you let hear me jump these in things? On that subject. Okay, yes. Because the, the, the subject of, you know, you treat your spouse or your significant other worse than anybody else in the world, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that as you grow closer and more intimate with a person, you feel safer with them. And so you feel safer to show that part of you that maybe isn't going so well, the part of you that's stressed, the part of you that you're not going to show anybody else. That's true. Because it can be a little scary to go into those places. And so the closer you are with somebody, the more intimate you are with somebody, the more likely you are to show them those parts of you that maybe aren't going so well. And so it's important to be aware of that. And one of the biggest things that I just talked about in one of my recent groups is how to turn that around. Because if we get into a pattern of just coming home and dumping on our significant other, dumping on our spouse, and just having them see all of our fears, our anxiety, our stress, all of the things that aren't working well, it can cause a lot of problem and tension in our relationship. And one of the most effective ways to turn that around is to start to show them more of the other side of you, the happy side, the joyful side, the part of your life that you just really are in love with, the things that you enjoy the most, and the more they get to see those things, it counterbalances the stress those, yes. and the, the negative side. Yes, and we should constantly, because I think we get in habits, you know, we just get in a habit of that, of the negativity, and we should, you know, think think, you know, it's okay to run that by them, mm -hmm. but they've got to see some happiness to her. They'll be looking around mm -hmm. out there. You have to balance it out. I agree. They'll see their, their rear end framed by two suitcases. Do you look back uh, sometimes um, on their past relationships, this is single people, mm -hmm. on the past and say, gee, you know, it looks like you've been doing this over and over again, if you yes, think about it. Yes, it. It, it can be very useful, especially for single people, to get clear about what are the patterns that you're creating. Um, if you feel like you're on a hamster wheel where you're attracting the same kind of person over and over again, just with a different face, there's a reason for that. And the reason is not the people who are out there. The reason is inside of you and figuring out what is it about that that keeps attracting you over and over. What is it that you're not seeing? Like we talked about earlier, yes. what is it that you are putting out there in the world that is causing that kind of person to be attracted to you? And the clearer you become about that, then you can start to change it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, then another topic was how to find high quality dates. That was in this, this is in his singles discussion. Yes. That is so great because high, you do want high quality, you know. So mm -hmm. how do how how do you address that? What how do you lead them? Everybody has a different idea and understanding of what high quality really means to them. And so it's really important to get clear about individual. what does high quality mean to right. you. Right. Some ladies might like McDonald's. Some might. Great McDonald's. And, and other people would rather go over to Jeff Ruby's. That's, you know, that's true. That's, so then you try to figure that out so for once, them. Where, where is your... Yes. Once you've established your... your clear idea of what is high quality to you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we also start to focus on what are the things that you really like to do? What are the things that you enjoy? What are the things that you would do even if you weren't getting paid to do it, if you had all the time and money in the world? Those things, the things that light you up inside, that make you feel alive, those are the things that you need to start doing more of and start to do it without having any expectation that you're going to meet somebody there. One of the biggest traps that single people fall into is going and doing things that they love, but secretly inside they're still looking. Who is out there that I might start to date? Who are the possibilities? And then they lose focus on the reason why they're going there. They're losing focus on the joy and the passion of, of that experience, the sheer mm -hmm. pleasure of getting to go out and do something. Mm -hmm. 
Joshua, how do we find the balance in, you know, not telling everything about yourself, holding back some, mm -hmm. or, you know, but yet we want to be frank. I mean, I I've had girlfriends that the guy didn't want them to smoke, so they didn't. Uh, the guy didn't like appreciate uh, cursing, so they didn't. Mm -hmm. But then after they landed him, they, you know, lit up the cig and started cursing. I mean, but, you know, it was so, it's such a defeatist yes. attitude. So, but how much are we ourselves? I mean, are you, are you telling this always be yourself? Absolutely. I mean, with those kind of things. If Absolutely. you smoke, you smoke. If you drink, you drink. If you curse, you curse. And, and don't try to sugarcoat this thing. The truth will come out. The truth will come out. And, and a simple question to ask. Do you want to have somebody who is going to love you for who you pretend to be? Or do you want to have somebody who is going to love you for who you really are? And maybe you take some steps to change some of the habits and the things about yourself that maybe you don't like. If you want to give up smoking and you're working on it, that's fine. But if, you, if who you are is showing up in that relationship and that's the person that they get to see, then they're going to fall in love with you for who you are, or they're not, and that's okay. But ultimately, and I found this true for every single person that I have ever worked with, we all want somebody who is going to love us and accept us unconditionally just for being us. Mm -hmm. And that's what every single person deserves to be. And so anything else where you're trying to cover up and hide and be somebody other than who you are is ultimately going to inhibit your progress. And it's going to get in your way of finding the happiness that you really want to have. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just one one more thing, Joshua, because we're starting to run out of time. The difference in your relationship coaching and the intimacy expert. It, is the intimacy expert married couples that are in trouble there sexually, and then you try to help them out with that? Mm -hmm. or? So intimacy is more than just sexual connection. But sexual connection is obviously a very important part of intimacy. So when we start to talk about intimacy, we're talking about emotional intimacy. We're talking about connection. We're talking about how close do you feel as a couple? Or are there any roadblocks, any things that are in the way? And let's talk about changing that. Let's talk about removing those obstacles so that you can feel close and connected and intimate together on every level, physical, emotional, mental. Let's cover the entire gamut. Because again, that's what we all want to have. We want to have a connection that is so real and so genuine and authentic that we feel fully loved and accepted for who we really are. That's such good advice. And, and Joshua, as I mentioned, we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know, is there anything you would like to add in closing? I just want to make an offer to anybody out there who is struggling with their relationships, whether it's creating a new relationship and finding that special someone, or if it's a, a married couple who's been together for a while and maybe they're having a hard time reconnecting. If you go out to my website, which is unearththepassion.com, and go to the contact page, there's a form there that you can fill out. Send me any question, any challenge that you may be having at all, and I will guide you through to a solution. Just include Lana Kay in the subject line. So again, unearththepassion.com. Go to the contact page, any question at all, and it will be my pleasure to serve you in finding a solution to any challenge that you're having right now. That is generous of you, and I'm so glad you came out and were with us today. Didn't we learn a lot? Uh, you've been listening to Joshua Barfels. Um, his information will follow, so stay tuned for that. And as always, you be happy, you keep smiling, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>